Whenever we talk about macro photography, the first image that comes to our mind is of flowers. And the second one is of water droplets. But there's so much more to macro photography apart from just flowers and water droplets. And in this video, that's what we are going to explore. But before we venture on this adventure of finding other subjects for macro photography, we need to understand what macro is. So it's basically the ability of any camera or actually a lens, ability of a lens to shoot very tiny objects or textures, which are otherwise very difficult to shoot. And that's why macro is so special. And to achieve that, you need dedicated macro lens or a cheaper version for that would be extension tubes, which I'm using. So before we go any further, let me show you what camera and extension tube I'm using. I'm using just a Canon 600D. Wait a second, I'll show it to you. So I'm using a Canon 600D, an entry-level DSLR, kit lens, which comes with the camera, and an extension tube. You see this small part here. This is a 21mm extension tube, which is nothing except a hollow extension that that gives your camera an ability to make macro photographs and we will see how this works i have set my camera to shutter priority because i don't need aperture since using an extension tube gives you a very shallow depth of field anyways so you don't need aperture priority you can just use shutter priority and leave everything else on automatic and it should work since this video is specially designed for beginners or people who want to learn something new. So let's keep it as simple as possible. And now back to the subject of finding the macro subject, which are not flower or water droplets. The most important thing in finding such things is observation. The opportunities for macro are everywhere. On a day-to-day -day basis, the things which you would not even recognize, you won't even pay attention to them. They could be very good subjects for macro photography. And a very good example of it is let's see <laughs> this moss for example look at this this moss can make a very good macro subject and look at this while looking at this moss i found something else a bit above it is a snail which makes for both a macro and for a normal photograph a very good subject then the third subject which we already have here is this park you know what I mean you just need to observe there are things in the surroundings which might look like nothing but for a macro photograph they'll do wonder for example this piece of stick sticking out of the ground you wouldn't notice it at all but if you see the texture here this will make such a good subject for a macro photograph so i'm going to just go ahead and try a few shots with this one how this comes out and i'll show it to you at the end of the video the important thing about it is that you that your focus has to be on manual so you can adjust it very nice texture, very nice. And I'm really happy with these photographs. Let's go to the moss. The snail is getting a bit shy. I don't want to disturb it too much. So I'm just going to stay with the moss and see if I don't disturb it too much, then I will take the photo of snail as well. Just taking care going as close as possible oh yes this looks cool if i can't sit straight then i need to hold myself properly uh, because moving too much can change your focus which you don't really want Cool, really good, really good. Mm. 
let's see if I can take a photo of this snail without disturbing it. Starting to shrink back into its shell. This skirt. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Okay, and now let's see if we can have a nice photograph of this park. I mean, this looks really good and it will look very good on a screensaver or a wallpaper. So let's see, how close can I get? What can I get? Okay, right, so you just need to keep trying. You have to move your camera forward, backwards to get the correct focus. This snail has come out again. Let's see if I can get that really. I don't know how it's called, but the texture on its back. This is really interesting. Fuha, I got it. I haven't got its face or the tentacles. I think it's its eye. <laughs> I don't know what it is. The point is you can find the the point is that you can find the subject for macro anywhere and everywhere if you are just looking. Although I said in this video we are looking for things which are not flower and water droplets. But hey, saying that, when you see something like this, how can you resist? Look at this beautiful, beautiful piece of land where these are all wild flowers. No one has cultivated them here. When you look at something like this, you can't resist to shoot, you know. I mean, there's everywhere. For example, this tiny flower. Uh, can you see it? Yes, 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 yes. Here, this one. When you see something like this, how can you resist taking a photo of this? So, I'm going to make a photo of this flower. Let's do it, let's do it. Whoops, there goes my camera, hopefully nothing happened, I hope the camera doesn't fall again, we will see what we get. I'm already happy with this, <laughs> but yes, one sure short way of not finding a macro subject is by doing this. If you are doing this, then definitely you won't find anything because that's how it is. <laughs> that's why it's very important if you want to find subjects to shoot as macro, you need to be observant. You will find macro opportunities everywhere. Everywhere, wherever you look, you will see something you can shoot for macro. By walking, I just find a bunch of wild strawberries, beautiful wild strawberries here. See how small they are. You can hardly see them. Look at my hand to see, to compare the size of them. If you're not looking for them, you will never find them. See this? These are wild strawberries, very small. But at the same time, you see there. I'll show you something. Very cool, if I can focus. Do you see it yet? Okay, it's not in focus, let me go a bit back but you see you know what i mean that thing hanging from the leaf that's again an opportunity for macro you just have to look so i'm just going to collect some wild strawberries for my son and then we're going to head back home strawberries strawberries oh he's going to be happy Oh, got some wild strawberries for my kids. And now let's head back home. So while editing this video, I've realized that it has become a bit too long. 
but I don't want to cut everything out. I still want to show you everything what I've shot, all the ideas, all the examples. So I've decided to cut this video into two parts and make a series of two. So this is going to be the first series and you'll get to see the second part as well next week sometime. And I'm going to put the photographs on now. I hope you liked it, enjoyed the video and the examples we showed there. If you liked it, don't be shy, give it a like, share it with your friends. And if this is your first time on my channel, please do subscribe, that goes a long way. So with that, I'm gonna say bye-bye. You enjoy the photographs and I'll see you in the second part. Bye-bye. Thank you.